Now, your car says everything about you, or so the ad men claim. What then of the traditional buyer of the bargain basement Skoda? Cautious, parsimonious, the solid family type. Not sassy, chic and continental. But that could change now that Volkswagen, with its reputation for quality and reliability, control the company which began by making bicycles in Czechoslovakia a hundred years ago. At this week's motor show, the new Skoda estate car will be launched with modest fanfare. It's a brand new model, but coming up with a new image for the car that fueled a thousand jokes is more tricky. Tom Maddox reports on the uphill task of driving the Skoda upmarket. Members of the 2,000 strong Skoda Owners Club gather for a treasure hunt at Bishop Stortford. And as even they'll admit, the Czech built cars remain, to most people, a joke. How do you double uh, the value of a Skoda? Fill it up with petrol. <laughs> What do you call a Skoda with twin exhausts? Uh, a wheelbarrow. <laughs> what do you call a Skoda at the top of a hill? A miracle. <laughs> <laughs> the hardcore Skoda fans don't care. They're among the most loyal consumers in the country. 72% of Skodas are bought by existing owners. They are, they're so rugged and so reliable. But they're just fun to drive. They handle well, they're a lot of fun, and they're cheap and they're easy to do your own maintenance on. The trouble is, Skoda knows it's no longer enough simply to cater for the die-hard bargain hunters. As competition increases, if it's to grow its business, it'll have to look upmarket. Over the last six months, we have been planning and implementing change. And the man who's got to do it is Skoda UK boss Dermot Kelly, helped by the launch of this year's new model. One thing above all others is a symbol of how much Skoda has changed. Ladies and gentlemen, the manifestation of Skoda's change, Felicia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, step forward and enjoy the change. With the Felicia, the dealers dream of competing with Peugeot's Fiat's and Fords instead of downmarket larders, though still aiming at buyers who put cash before cachet. We have been described by uh, one magazine as the brand from hell, but uh, it's a task that has to be done. What we're trying to do is communicate to people the facts about Skoda. There are so many good things in this, in this brand which are being overshadowed by the past image, and it's those things we want to communicate. Skoda wasn't always a synonym for cheap. Its origins go back a hundred years, when a company called Lorin & Klemmer started making bikes, then cars, near Prague. Skodas have been sold in Britain for 40 years, but by the 70s their reputation hit rock bottom, when the rear-engined Estelle was condemned as inherently dangerous by the AA, and the jokes began. In 1991, Volkswagen took a stake, now 60%. It's invested over a billion pounds to modernise the factory and the car. By this year, the Felicia was ready. Well, Skoda has certainly improved the look of a car. It's perfectly acceptable to drive, nice to look at, much like any other new European car nowadays. But how much has really changed? To see if it's very different from the favourite it replaces, I turn to car industry watcher John Lawson. Well, there's a, f a lot of new sheet metal, but it is a heavy facelift. The engine block, transmission, braking system, battery, all come from the previous vehicle model. The new parts in this, in fact, uh, the Western technology parts stick out like a sore thumb. To change it fundamentally, you have to start from the ground up. But it's the favourite underneath? It's the favourite underneath with uh, sheet metal revisions and a brand new interior. So they've changed the car a bit with a brand new model to replace the Felicia due in around three years. But changing the image is proving less easy. First, Skoda wanted to find out what people really thought of the new car, untainted by the Skoda name. So a group of Manchester motorists are given the Felicia to try out, but they've no idea who the manufacturer is. 
sorry, I forgot to mention one thing. You don't look under the bonnet. Oh. Oh. First reactions are pretty favourable. It's a nice looking car and it drives nice. It does 80 quite easily. I thought the performance of the car was alright. I was impressed, really. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what it is. But as soon as they're told the car's identity, attitudes change. <laughs> no, it, it is in fact a Skoda. We've oh. seen dead in one of them. The company's own research shows the Skoda badge cuts several hundred pounds off the price people are willing to pay. I couldn't see myself going out and buying one because of, it's the image of having a Skoda, and I think that's something that Skoda's got to address, really. It's a huge problem to overcome, and I'm not going to drive a car that people will laugh at. We're on the marketing meeting in five minutes. Back at Milton Keynes HQ, Dermot and his marketing team know that Volkswagen won't simply abandon the Skoda name. Let's talk money. So instead, they've got to concentrate on changing its public perception. But they haven't got much money to do it with. But the branding and the exposure marketing opportunities are there for the taking. So marketing manager Paul Hunter's under pressure. There's a budgetary issue because we can't do the job effectively with the money that's been provided. The car industry spends a billion pounds a year pushing its wares. Skoda's share, just five million. The finance director even has to sign for four cups of coffee. They can't afford TV ads, so Skoda's adopted a two-prong strategy. Firstly, there's a poster and print campaign emphasizing the VW link to try and change general perceptions. Volkswagen is a signature for quality and reliability and that's what Volkswagen has brought to Skoda in terms of production, design uh, and, and manufacturing. It's still very much a Skoda but it now has the, those qualities attached to it. But many people, including management consultant and style commentator Peter York, believe changing something as deeply ingrained as the Skoda image won't be as easy as the company thinks. They'll need to spend a lot of money on the advertising and they'll need to have very attention-grabbing advertising because it's not as if the nation is obsessed with the Skoda issue, you know. It's got to be exciting advertising. The car's got to look nice, it's got to sound like good value, it's got to be a good package. And uh, is it exciting enough advertising? My instant reaction to the advertising is that it's not very dramatic it wouldn't get very great attention. Undaunted, Dermot Kelly and his PR chief, Eilish O'Shea, are off to London, in a Skoda, naturally, to see how the second part of the strategy is going. Well, consumer PR is the thing I want to talk about, because I want to get some right. comfort before we get to the meeting. Right. Yeah. The idea is to try and get articles about Skoda in papers and magazines that don't usually cover motoring matters. Many Skoda buyers probably never read the motoring pages anyway. Yeah. I noticed that Reader's Digest are now looking at the whole road rage issue. Yeah. So there is, there is a, um, a bigger opportunity to be had. Hello, Mark. It's Jessica from Countrywide Communications. So they've hired an upmarket consumer PR firm, Countrywide, whose only other car client is Rolls Royce. Hi, nice to see you again. Hello. And you? Hi, hi. Hi. Their latest wheeze is to capitalise on the current concern about road rage. The road rage initiative is, is absolutely bang on target because there's been so much interest in road rage and nobody really has come up with a solution yet. This is the finished version of what... They've produced a kit with the AA for sufferers. It includes a stress indicator and special relaxation tape to be given away free at Skoda dealerships. Um, which the hidden the agendas drive, to associate Skoda with rational, logical drivers, again, the kind they hope will buy the car. It's already garnered plenty of media coverage. So it's a simple, easy to remember plan um, around... So that's something again, physical to do in order yes. to sort of mm. take your stress level down. Yeah. OK, so that's... Yes. Is that OK, Dermot? Yeah. You're happy with that? Next, Countrywide's fixed up a test drive for Dermot with Karen Pusey of She Magazine. Yep. Let's drive it. Let's drive it. The company's particularly targeting younger women drivers instead of traditional Skoda buyers who tend to be older and male. Hey, it's all right, you know. I wonder if we can have a burn up in the park. I think we'll, I think we'll try the park. Is there a speed limit in Hyde Park? Probably. 
and you'll probably over it. <laughs> the company believes working women needing reliable, basic transport will be a key growth market. Well, that was more fun than I expected. But some remain unconvinced that Skoda's new media strategy can bring about a quick fix. It's nonsense the idea that somehow an advertiser can simply change an image overnight. Stop pressing that button, press that button instead. Images take on a life of their own. They become cultural artifacts. People remember who bought it, who used it. You know, his mum, her dad, stuff like that. You can't rub that out overnight. So it's a long haul to change a brand image, particularly if it becomes the butt of jokes. The company knows that to do that, it's also got to smarten up its dealerships and shed its back street image. In Exeter, they're celebrating the launch of a brand new Skoda dealership, Livery Dole. More dealers like this have been taken on in better locations and with a more upmarket look. It does give me great pleasure to open the newest Skoda dealership in Skoda's 100 year history, so let's see if this works. And it does. Yeah. Others, like this garage in nearby King's Kurswell, have been casualties of the new regime. Until earlier this year, Val Skeffington ran a successful business selling Skodas here. So this is it? Yes, this is it. The used car lot, as you see now. We used to cover about a 20 mile radius from here. But Val believes Skoda's playing a dangerous game. The push-up market, with bigger dealerships in central locations, could lose the company a lot of its loyal customers. The customers don't want huge gym palaces in the middle of towns. They want a comfortable, nice, relaxed environment to buy their car, and where they feel comfortable with the people there. It's all about people. It's not about premises. It's, you know, I mean, we could all go and invest many thousands of pounds in, in premises and achieve absolutely nothing by it, because people feel very intimidated by these great operations. We've spoken to dealers in the past about sales performance, facilities, location, uh, and it's about capital investment as well, growing up, if you like, with the brand image. They need to grow with it. They need to deliver uh, to this new audience what their expectations are. And those that can't are out? Those that won't, uh, obviously, will, will look somewhere else other than the Skoda brand. They'll be told by you that they've got to? Oh, quite clearly. Yeah, quite clearly. We're not going to, we're not going to pussyfoot around. The bigger danger for Skoda is that slick marketing campaigns, higher prices and a more upmarket image could alienate rather than expand its core market. So we took Dermot Kelly along to answer his critics from the Skoda Owners Club. We're a bit uh, wary that uh, you're going further and further than what Skoda used to be. Compared with other cars, it's very low in price, yeah, and we've tried to maintain that. We're trying to change the image of Skoda. Yeah? We're trying to change the image in a positive way. And part of that is being very confident about who we are and, and being seen in, uh, out in the public. Yeah? There are a lot of old. But not cars. everyone's convinced. Yeah. What do you think of the new Skodas? There's nothing wrong with them. They're a nicely built car, but I wouldn't want one. They're just a modern you know, Euro box sort of thing. They're just an everyday car. I like these because they've got character. They're something different. The Germans are doing it wrong because they're bringing up the quality. Uh, well, I don't say the quality is wrong, but while doing that, they're bringing the price up so high that the average club member won't buy them. Meanwhile, Skoda's facing tougher competition than ever before. Once it was just fellow Eastern Bloc names like Lada that Skoda had to compete with in the budget market. Now there's a string of new Far Eastern makes, including Hyundai and Kia, entering the market. The newest contender is the Korean firm Daewoo, which has spent £150 million establishing itself in the British market. The current Daewoo's are based on old Astras and Cavaliers from General Motors, but there are new ones on the way. And their showrooms are so high-tech, you can design your own car on the computer. To change the colour of your car, touch one of the colour buttons. When you are ready, 
touch accept this card. I think in the future you're going to see a whole host of new entrants because wherever you look in emerging markets manufacturers are putting in a little bit of extra capacity and are looking to re-export some of those vehicles towards uh, Europe and the UK ultimately we'll even see Chinese cars in the UK budget marketplace so it'll be even tougher for Skoda Skoda will clearly uh, have to uh, work very hard to uh, improve its share. It also has to work hard to improve its image. So, despite the risks, Dermot's now decided he has to try and speed up the change of image. He's off to market research consultants Quadrangle for some new ideas. Its boss, John Gambles, believes there are new markets Skoda can pitch for. Some quite surprising. You see, I, one of the things I love, which really did surprise me when we looked at owners, was the extent to which they're interested in cultural activities. So, music, opera, theatre, uh, English heritage, mm. the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's so much we can do in that area. Even with its new estate car launched this week and a Mondeo-sized vehicle planned for 1997, Skoda may still find it hard to carve out its own niche. But Dermot Kelly is not contemplating failure. If we can change the image, then there's an enormous potential in future for Skoda, and that's what we must do. There are easier ways, or so people think, of perhaps changing the name or hiding our identity. But we're not going to do that. We're going to take this head on and we're going to improve the image. And as a result, we're going to get the benefit of all that awareness that, that the British public has. What happens if you fail? What happens if we fail? I, I'm not contemplating that. I, I believe that we will succeed. With so much competition in the budget sector, the company has little option but to push up market. The danger is that however much they change the car, they'll still be unable to persuade enough people that it's no joke to be seen driving a Skoda. On Maddox with the die-hard Skoda fans.